Okay, so this is another utility maximization example um, for inferior goods, and we're going to be dealing with like uh, budget constraint budget lines and indifference curves. And then uh, later on, we're going to have like I think a price change, and then we're going to talk about income and substitution effect. This problem comes from Krugman Wiles Microeconomics Second Edition Chapter Eleven, which is the consumer preference and consumer choice chapter, and Question Thirteen. Uh, so the question reads: uh, Pam spends her money on bread and spam. And her indifference curves obey the four properties of indifference curves of ordinary goods. Suppose that for, pa for Pam, spam is an inferior good and not a given good. Bread is a normal good. Bread costs two dollars per loaf, and spam costs two bucks per can. Uh, Pam has twenty dollars to spend. Cool. So uh, part A. Oh well, um, just so we cover the four properties of indifference curves of ordinary goods. Um, it's covered in detail in the chapter and hopefully in your lecture, but just to kind of review, so indifference curves never cross, um, and then also the further away from the origin, uh, that indifference curve is associated with a higher level of total utility. Um, the third one is that indifference curves always slope downward, and then the fourth thing is that they're convex shapes. Uh, I think perfect complements are L-shapes, um, but in general, indifference curves are always a convex, sorry, uh, yeah, a convex slate shape. Um, so those are the four properties. You'll see them all in the indifference curve that I'll draw. So problem A, part A. Draw a diagram of Pam's budget line, placing spam on the horizontal axis and bread on the vertical axis. Suppose her optimal consumption bundle is four cans of spam and then six loaves of bread. Illustrate the bundle and draw the indifference curve on which it lies. Wait, so give me one second. Great, so part A, that's what I've done here. Um, first off, we have a budget line. Uh, we're not really told too much about the budget line. We're told Pam, how much does Pam have total? Pam total has a total of $20. Um, so the budget line here goes up to, if uh, Pam were to spend all of their money on spam, you know, zero on bread, all of the money on, on bread, on spam, and spam costs $2 per can of spam, then um, they would be able to get 10 cans of spam. And then up here, um, you got a similar thing. If uh, Pam were to spend all of their money on bread, you know, so zero on spam and all the money on bread, they would be able to buy 10 loaves of bread. So the budget line is this line right here. And then it also reflects, you know, all of the other possible combinations here. This uh, inside the triangle here are bundles of bread and spam that Pam can afford. However, uh, she's not going to, if she's looking to maximize her utility, she's not going to buy anything here. Um, along the edge of the, uh, you know, the, on the edge of the frontier of what, of the consumption bundles that she could afford is the, of her, is her spending all of her money. So along this whole line, she's spending all of her $20 that she has to spend on some combination of bread and spam. Uh, and then here we have the indifference curve, and we're told that it follows the four assumptions of indifference curves. So first off, you can see it's a convex shape. Um, indifference curves, the further the, uh, the way from the origin they are, so here's the origin, and the further away they are, the higher the utility associated with that indifference curve. So in, in some sense, you could think of this as like a, a topographic map. So in the indifference curve is some sort of like altitude, and the higher you are, the higher utility. So you can imagine that there's a hill going off in this direction, and there's all of these little, you know, uh, altitude lines going off in this way, representing higher and higher utility. The further the util the further away from the origin that indifference curve, the higher the utility. And then uh, Pam is going to maximize her utility uh, such that she. Uh, chooses the consumption bundle such that her indifference curve, the highest indifference curve possible, is exactly tangent to her budget constraint. Uh, and then the question here, you know, suppose just says suppose that the optimal consumption bundle is four cans of spam. So here's four cans of spam and six loaves of bread. Um, so it says illustrate this bundle and draw the indifference curve on which it lies right here. So uh, you know, some of this is kind of arbitrarily shaped. I just kind of chose the shape of an indifference curve. Um, and then I, I doubt that this is exactly the scale, but you have six loaves of bread, four loaves of spam, and here you go.
Move it on to part B. Part B asks or tells us that the price of spam falls to one dollar. The price of bread remains the same. Pam now buys this optimal this new optimal consumption bundle of seven loaves of bread and six cans of spam. And then illustrate all this: the new budget line, the new optimal consumption bundle, I guess the new indifference curve, um, uh, in the diagram. So I've taken the old one here. Um, so now we're going to need a new budget line. So first off, uh, bread. So we're told that the price of spam falls, and we're not. We're told that the income has stayed exactly the same, or we have, we're told that income hasn't changed. So this intercept is going to stay over here. If uh, this person were to spend all of their money, you know, uh, the twenty dollars on bread, they'd be able to buy ten loaves of bread. Uh, so let's, and then the new budget line um, on this intersection. Uh, since the price of spam has gone down to one dollar and they have a twenty dollar budget constraint if they were to spend all of their money on spam they'd be able to buy twenty cans so this is our new budget line down here uh, give me one second and I'm gonna kind of relabel it for you sweet so I kinda did it here so we got our new budget line I'm gonna call BL2 uh, which is this line over here once again uh, with a $20 budget they could spend on a maximum of 10 loaves of bread uh, or they could use their $20 budget to, to buy a maximum of 20 cans of spam so here's the new budget constraint we're then told that uh, Pam's new optimal consumption bundle is seven loaves of bread right here and then six cans of spam right here so this is our optimal consumption bundle everything's not exactly to scale but okay let's just say it's right there so the last thing we need to do is uh, put in an indifference curve give me a few cents uh, and I'll do that right now. Okay, so I added in the new indifference curve right here. The indifference curve is going to be exactly tangent to the um, optimal consumption bundle of seven loaves of bread and six cans of spam. Um, and uh, this way we've set it up is that this indifference curve reflects a higher utility. Uh, and that's it. So now we're asked um, in question C, part C, in your diagram, show the income and substitution effects from this fall and the price of spam. Remember that spam is an inferior good for Pam. So the first part is um, let's show the substitution effect. So to do that, I'm going to need a new line. So we got our new budget. We had our new budget line here with uh, given the price change. So this price, um, this budget line right here, gives us a sense of the relative, uh, has a fixed relative price. So um, to show the substitution effect, to show the substitution effect, I've drawn in this new um, budget line right here with the dashed lines. Okay, so this new line, uh, if you remember, we changed prices for uh, spam. So this new line right here has the same relative prices of the new, um, you know, relative prices between spam and bread. This line right here has the same relative prices, but we've it's just a, a decrease, reflects a decrease in income. So it keeps the same relative prices uh, as after our price change. But it's like a thought experiment such that it says, well, okay, given our new relative prices, let's decrease the income of this person, of Pam, uh, to bring them back to their old indifference curve, which uh, the position I put it here makes it exactly tangent to the old indifference curve. So this budget line right here, their optimal consumption bundle is going to be on the exact same uh, indifference curve as we started out with. Okay, so we started out over here at 6 and 4. Uh, and we were saying that if we were to change the relative prices, you know, to the new situation, um, but also then decrease their income or change their income so that they stay on the um, same indifference curve, how are they going to adjust their consumption bundle? So how are they going to substitute away? So um, given that thought exercise, so once again, same relative prices, but a change in income to keep them on, on that same indifference curve, we find that they move from six uh, bread and four spam to some higher quantity of spam over here and some lower quantity of bread. 
and the move from this point to this new hypothetical point over here reflects the substitution effect. So, um, what, so the steps that we're doing here are we're keeping the same relative prices of our final budget line, but we're changing their income to bring them back to the original indifference curve, that I sub 1. Uh, and then we're comparing their original optimal bundle here to the new one. And the change reflects a decrease in bread and a, sub so a substitution away, away from bread to spam given the lower price of spam. So I made a point over here. The point, the move from six loaves of bread and four cans of spam to this point over here, which we don't know exactly is, reflects the substitution effect. And then, so what's the income effect? The income effect is now going from this new point that we just created over here to the final point after the price change. This change here to this change here, we have the same relative prices. You know, this budget line is exactly parallel to our new budget line. So the same relative prices, so there's no substitution effect. We've just increased the income uh, such that we're at the new indifference curve. So the change from this point to this point reflects the income effect. Uh, what's interesting about it is, uh, remember normal goods, the definition of a normal good is one that if income rises, then you expect, uh, well, what definition of a normal good, if income rises, your demand for that good increases. Um, and you see that for bread going from this income level, hypothetical income level, to this, the new one, our quantity of bread is definitely increased. It's somewhere here lower than six, and now is equal to seven loaves of bread. Uh, however, in terms of quantity of spam, we've gone from this point here, increased our income, and now we've reduced our quantity of spam to uh, six cans of spam. And remember, spam we've defined here as an inferior good. So once again, the substitution effect is the difference from the original uh, bundle to this new one, and reflects the substitution away from bread to spam, given the decreased price in spam. And the income effect is the move from uh, this hypothetical point here that we created to the final point, and it reflects just a, just a change in income. And because spam here we've assumed as an inferior good, you can see that increasing income decreases the quantity demanded of spam. Uh, that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, this is, just so you know, this, this video is part of a larger collection of videos that uh, work through problems and examples from introductory to microeconomics textbooks. So um, I'll post the link to where you can find more, um, and have a nice day. Bye.